Hey guys, today I'm gonna be showing you how to make an illustration or drawing that you've done and make it into a greeting card or potentially any type of merchandise. So to begin with, you're gonna need um, three things, I think. <laughs> you're gonna need your illustration, a computer, and a scanner. Uh, or any sort of device where you can take a picture of the drawing or illustration that you have of course if you work digitally you're not gonna need it you're gonna have the file already in your computer so it's all good um, optional things would maybe be a printer and white card paper but um, that depends on the approach you want to take on your cards and what resources you have for yourself um, but we're gonna discuss all that later so We'll just get to it now. Okay, first of all, we're gonna make sure our scanner is plugged to our computer, and we have a photo editing editing software ready. Um, I'm using Photoshop, so you are more than welcome to use any software that you have available. So, open your scanner. Put your illustration the way it's directed to. And my scanner has a little arrow here that shows you what direction your scanning is gonna go. Take it down, and I'll show you how to possibly go on my computer. All right, so we're gonna continue this here on Photoshop. Um, we're gonna go on File, Import Images from the Vines, and it should recognize our scanner. And we're gonna press Overview. Alright, so here we have the image, and in my case I'm going to select everything. Of course, if you have just a tiny corner of your paper, you can just select that one part. But I'm going to select the whole thing and make sure it's on the settings that I want, on 300 dpi. You can scan as high as you want, sometimes it goes 600. So you have your illustration here um, and you can edit it all in one go if you want. I think I'm going to opt out for editing them individually. So I'm going to open a new document, oh I'm sorry, I'm going to open a new document, <laughs> I'm going to mess up and then I'm going to open a new document uh, and it's going to be A5 and CMYK because we want to print this. 300 dpi, vertical orientation, great. So we're gonna select the one that we wanna use. In my case, I wanna use this little pug. Copy, paste it. And I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller. Good, and now we're gonna play around with the levels. Make things a bit more vibrant. There we go. Um, just editing your image around to make it look as it looks in your painting or as polished as you want it to look. I'm gonna increase the saturation just a little bit. Hopefully I can pick the white around her and delete. Oh, that deleted her socks. We don't want that, so we're gonna zoom in and select her little socks. I'm doing this with my trackpad, but of course, 
feel free to do this um, with a tablet if you have one and if you feel more comfortable so delete that and command D and now we're gonna zoom in and try to fix um, things like the little hairs and stuff like that Once you're done polishing your image as much as you would like to, feel free to merge the levels and saturation manager layers alongside your picture. And now you have a free range of it to move around however you want. I'm gonna make mine a little bit smaller and place it a lot lower. Maybe not that low. There is fine. Um, yeah, fine. So this is when you can play with the design a lot. You could grab your tablet or use do it on the trackpad, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna select the color of her dress and I'm gonna in a new layer draw um maybe something. Yeah. Draw little small details here and there, like um, some flowers, and I know they look really rough. Um, so you can just try here and there what looks better. It all depends on the image that you are making and what style you'd like to approach it. And what do you think would elevate it? For example, I think oh my that color is a bit too plain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a very very pale yellow, uh, blue instead, um, and see how that looks. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better. Maybe a bit more saturated. There we go. I think that kind of gives it a bit more character. Um, more personality, and if I grab the layers where the hearts are, the smaller brush, and I select this color, you can do on mist outline for the detail. Yeah, like that. And now we're going to play with the text, so we're going to keep playing first, just so it's easy to see. And I'm going to write a message. I think when, coming, when it comes to the color of your text, I mean, I'm no graphic design expert by any means. I always like to either choose black, white, or a color that's in the illustration that you're doing. Um, just as you kind of bring things together, black and white neutral, so if you have a very light picture, it was using white, using black will stand out in the same way as with white, if you have a dark illustration, the white text will stand out. In this case, I'm going to sample um, the brown that she has on her face. Oh, I don't know. Maybe brown will do. Let's try the purple. Let's make it a little bit darker. Let's see how that goes. And we're gonna write a message. So I want this to be a birthday card. So I'm gonna write flowers for your birthday. So that's our message. Um, gonna make it a little bit bigger, maybe 30. 
and we're gonna try and find the font that suits the image. Um, when finding the font, always make sure that it's a hundred percent free use, greeting, especially if you're planning to sell your greeting cards. It needs to be a font that it's free. Obviously, you can buy fonts that have no copyright, but some fonts do. So if you download a font, just make sure um, that you can use it for reselling and stuff. Um, I like this one. Let's see what it looks like a bit bigger. Oh, I might be a bit too big. That looks nice. It's a bit messy. Not the easiest one to read. This is the sort of birthday card that you would give a child, perhaps. So things like that should be considered when choosing the design, the layout, and the font. I think. Um, and when it comes to things like that, you might want to make your font a bit easier to read. I think that's a bit easier. Um, yeah. I don't know about the purple. It's just all about experimentation. See what you like, what you don't like. Um, maybe let's grab... Maybe let's make it black. How does that look? Yeah, it doesn't look bad. It's a bit bold and strong for all the other colors we have. So, just experiment. I'm gonna do that now and then we'll see how it looks at the end. Design. As you can see, I've taken out the blue, I've added some small details here and there. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print this on a cream colored paper rather than a white one, and hopefully, that will give it a bit more body. So, you have this image, we're gonna save it now. Um, okay. Open my layers, clean my layers, and we're gonna open a new document. In this case, make it a four horizontal layout CMYK 300 dpi. We're gonna mark where the middle goes. You should click some Photoshop. Um, I'm gonna copy the group and I'm gonna put a white background just so everything is one image go and merge all the layers copy it paste and move it accordingly perfect so this is how the card will be printed so when you fold it, it looks a bit weird right now, but when you fold it, it will, this will be the front, this will be the back. Um, something that I would recommend doing, you are more than free to skip this step, is to leave a little small watermark, bottom back. which I will stamp on at the end um, and yeah this is the final product um, there's different ways you can print this you can print it at home if you have a good enough printer to do so uh, which is what I do most of the time or you could use an external website uh, there's a million different options I'll show you a few some are better than others um, but I'll show you the ones I know of Hey guys, so we're back. Um, I thought I'd bring along some examples of cards that I printed. So this one I printed here at home. 
uh, this one I got printed through printed.com and this one I got printed through uh, dog zoo um, so I printed this card in cream paper quality is pretty good the paper is a lot thinner than I would like to so this is just gonna be a hard proofing uh, as you can see it has my name on the back and I love it I think it came out great and for the other two this is the one I printed in dog zoo.com this is printer.com i think in terms of quality they're pretty much identical this one does arrive unfolded and it comes with a folded mark so you can fold it yourself which is why it's a bit more um <laughs> open than this one this one's already come folded um the paper on this one is a tiny bit thinner than this one i don't quite remember what thickness i chose for this paper it must have been a bit thicker but in terms of print quality, they look pretty much identical, colors are true to the image, which is something that you don't have to struggle with when you print at home, uh, when you get outside printed rather than printing at home, because that's something I always have issues with when I'm printing things at home. I always have to make sure it's color matching to the image, and it's a bit hassle sometimes. So um, here are the cards. Anyways, we've reached the end of the video. I hope you guys learned something and or at least had fun. Um, I try to make more videos. I know I only make one once a week now. So I'll try to pull some more out coming. So please subscribe for more content and like and leave me a comment. Say what you think. Have you made greeting cards before? If so, what's your experience with it? Anyways, see you guys later. Bye.